But I also, uh, I think I heard yeah. on the line the uh, state representative, state senator, I should say, from Michigan's 15th district, the Republican from White Lake, who has uh, sent a letter to Governor Whitmer, and uh, he's prioritizing who should receive the COVID-19 that we're hearing so much about from Pfizer and Moderna here in Michigan. And uh, he is suggesting that the governor prioritize who gets it first. And uh, Jim Runstad, the Republican from White Lake, as I said, joining us now. Senator, good morning. Great to have you back on the show, sir. Good morning, Frank. Uh, glad to be on. All right. So how should we sort through all of this? Because there's going to be great demand, to, especially with the number of COVID cases going up. Well, I'm uh, so pleased to hear the results that uh, from uh, both of these companies, apparently 95% of this is uh, effective. And uh, so it's going to be in strong demand, but it shouldn't be just equally available to those who have very little likelihood of being severely impacted uh, versus those who, if they contract the coronavirus, such as those in nursing homes, have a very high death rate. And uh, those who are first responders who have to deal with individuals who have uh, the coronavirus. Uh, These two populations are the most vulnerable and really need to be put in front of the uh, line in order to get this uh, virus as quick as possible, or this uh, vaccination as quick as possible. Yeah, I want to quote from your letter to Governor Whitmer, in which you say that uh, you're concerned, obviously, about the vaccinations, and you want to see that, uh, you want to urge that seniors, those with underlying health conditions, and frontline and essential workers be given priority in the availability of a COVID-19 vaccine. And Chris Alberta, I, I don't know if too many people would uh, have, uh, have a problem with that. These are our heroes No, I, I can't imagine they would. Yeah, and Jim, Chris here, does that letter, which is so well-crafted and poignant, it, was that in any way uh, a bit of um, a preemptive strike because you've seen some indications or maybe have a hunch that the priority of distribution would be out of whack? Well, I, I have a, a lot of problems with the way the governor has uh, conducted her administration pertaining primarily to nursing home patients. As you know, uh, we were one of a few states that said if you have a infected individual uh, with the coronavirus, they could be put in. Whoops, I hope that uh, little uh, beep right there wasn't a sign that Senator Runstad dropped off the uh, the line with us, but I, I fear that's what, uh, that's what happened right there, Chris. Uh, yeah, he's, maybe he's being censored by big, big tech. There you go. Big tech is censoring him, and uh, <laughs> that's the claim we're going to make. And we don't have to prove it, okay? We just say it. That's, that's good. Just kidding, well, everybody. Just kidding. You know, I tell you, Frank, because his, somebody will take that seriously out there. I guarantee you. But at any well, rate, his uh, letter is is right on the money, isn't it, Frank? Oh, I'll tell you what. Uh, why wouldn't you make this priority? And and I'm not saying they won't in the Department of Health and Human Services. Robert Gordon uh, is a, is a smart man who's he's worked nationally with the Obama administration, and he's got a lot of experience. And, and he understands that even if this is coming from you know it's motivated by politics, I don't care. I think it's important and it's right spot on that we we try to get seniors uh, with underlying health conditions, those people, uh, frontline and essential workers. Who I don't know of anybody who's going to argue against. This, Chris, giving these people priority. I certainly uh, wouldn't Frank, think I, that. Uh, Frank, Go I ahead, just uh, got got back on. Um, somehow I <laughs> got lost uh, here in uh, a disconnect. But um, yeah, Senator, is, uh, I, is, I have one explanation for it, Senator Renstad. I'll I'll just put it in these terms: twenty twenty. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's that's what we're going to attribute everything to uh, uh, that goes wrong now. Uh, But uh, it is my hope that this letter will uh, be received in a positive way and that uh, we do hear from the department that this is going to be a policy that they will pursue because it it does. It just makes so much sense. And I haven't heard this uh, uh, being propagated yet in the administration, but hopefully we get real good uh, response back and that they say, uh, yes, this makes sense and this is what we're going to do. Do you think there's any reason to believe that there'll be a, a political element to this where, uh, you know, you've got a Democrat in the in the executive office, you've got Republicans leading the Senate and the House? Is, are you sensing there's resistance immediately from things that you, uh, that you propose as a Republican? Well, it's uh, unfortunate that uh, there's so many things that the legislature has 
reached out to the governor on and just has not got a response. Uh, when she was operating with her executive orders, there was no consultation with the legislature. Yeah, well, I so sure hope we get a response pressure. on this, Senator. And I thank you for joining us. Uh, sadly, we're out of time. Uh, Senator Jim Runstad from the 15th District, and we, uh, we thank him so much for being on the show. Uh, we'll talk thank again, you. Senator. Take care. Thank you.